Hello everyone, Beastie here. I am back with another video and today we're going to be discussing something that community has been quite concerned and uh, something that's been mentioned many many times over the past uh, week or two, which is, is Terran too weak? Is Terran just completely unplayable? So for those that maybe haven't seen, I am Katowice. Uh, this is the group stage for the main tournament and also the playoff bracket. And as you can see, if you haven't watched the tournament, Terrans did not do well. Uh, we had only one Terran advance and then he quickly lost in round of 12 TY to Solar 3-0. So a lot of people have been saying that, you know, Terran is just too weak. If these guys, Innovation, Gumiho, Maru and all the other Terrans, if they can't win, how am I supposed to win in, you know, Gold League, Diamond League, Master League, Low GM League, whatever. Uh, so... A lot of people on Twitch and YouTube have asked me what I think about this. Well, you know, why did they lose? And I finally decided to kind of make the video and give my point of view on it. So um, I don't think that the issue is specifically balance. I don't think Terran is necessarily weaker than the other two races. Purely looked from balance point of view. I think there are a couple of things why Terran failed in this specific tournament. So I'll just go kind of quickly why I think that is. Um, first things first, which is the biggest thing, is the weekly tournament versus GSL format. Uh, it's always been known, and some people, I guess, just never consider this. Weekly tournaments are tournaments that happen over one weekend, like I am Katowice, where you come on, you know, as a player on Thursday or Friday, and you finish on Sunday evening, and that's it, you go home. Uh, most of the time, you know, there's a bracket, maybe a group stage qualifier into a playoff bracket, and that's it. Now, Terrans are the worst race for this, and Zergs are the best race for this, and I'll quickly explain why. So, as a Terran player, uh, you need to prepare your build orders for quite a while. You need to practice those builds for quite a while because there's a lot of macroing, a lot of add-on switching, a lot of timings, a lot of how do I defend this, how do I defend that. And there's a lot of harassing uh, the opponent in your gameplay. So why is there bad in weekly tournaments? Well, you cannot have, you know, five, six, seven completely different build orders that you're coming into a tournament. As a pro player, you probably go in with, with one to three uh, builds per matchup, but overall your playstyle and your gameplay is kind of same in in so for example against Zerg um, Let's say Gumiho people know that he is most likely to, to do play mech and to just do kind of standard hellbat pushes and Gumiho Maybe doesn't have a lot of time to prepare super unique strategies Because even if you do prepare super unique strategies, you're gonna be playing so many different players that by the time you get to the third fourth opponent of that race they're gonna know what you can do and, and what build orders or play styles you're doing. So a good example of this is Special. Now I'm not gonna go into details about the results, but let's say Special played against Stats, stats and Zest first in this group stage. Let's say the, you know, the group is not done. And let's say Special had, you know, Widow Mine with Drilling Claws openers and he beats the first two protosses with those strategies because they're kind of unique. Not many people do that. But then he needs to play the other three Protosses, which at that point in the tournament, you know, players talk and they know that he's doing that. So they're going to do some things to kind of blind counter it, maybe open Stargate every game against him. Just kind of do these mild counters and just have in mind what his common strategies were and how he was moving his arm and so on. Now, obviously, this is something that no matter what race you play, people will do this against you. <clears throat> but... When you're tearing, when you're a race that's so uh, focused on harassing, this is an issue because your harassment throughout the tournament becomes less and less and less effective, if that makes sense, because the opponents are more and more prepared against what you're doing. They're going to have VODs to study. Uh, they're going to talk to other players and just kind of get more uh, general knowledge about how you're currently playing, because people can definitely change up their play styles, but not within the same tournament. Uh, especially if you're doing these long uh, macro style builds that are not like proxy two ranks, for example. Now, Protoss, as the kind of the race in the middle, also suffers a little bit from this, but Protoss has a lot more strong all ins compared to Terran. So, uh, 
all ins, no matter what race you are, Terran, Protoss, or Zerg. They don't require a lot of practice. You know, you Terrans don't go into the tournament practicing proxying two Raxes all day. That's something that every Terran knows how to do. And the same thing for top tier Protosses. You know, they, they all know how to do the eight gate charge lot all in against Zerg. They all know how to do proxy robo. So they don't need to practice it, but they have a lot more all in options as co compared to Terran. So going into a tournament, they do suffer against the build order kind of disadvantage and players knowing what they like to do and what they will do most likely, but they can mix in many more all-ins to kind of make it easier on them. And then we have Zerg. Now, again, this is not balance issue. This is just how the races work. Um, Protoss and Terran are more harass oriented and then doing a follow-up timing to kill the opponent. Well, the Zerg is completely different. Uh, as a Zerg player going into this tournament, uh, are you going to prepare a couple of cheeses like we've seen Nidus Worms? Sure. But again, those strategies do not require a lot of time to practice. What does require a lot of time to practice is just straight up macro play uh, as a Zerg player. How do I deflect this attack? Um, if Terran has Hellbat opening, Banshee opening, and Battlecruiser opening, they're practicing against those things. So when they go into a tournament, they need to rely on scouting in order to defeat their opponents. And it doesn't matter if someone knows like, hey, he likes to open links because that might have been a reactionary opening, uh, you know, Zerglings. Maybe next game he will open Roaches because that doesn't uh, differentiate or change the playstyle of the Zerg too much. Because top tier Zergs can play Link Bane Muta or they can play Link Bane Hydra or Roach base play. So because the Zerg is much more scouting oriented race that reacts to what Terran and Protoss are doing for them going into this tournament even if they play five Protoss in a row the Protosses are not going to say oh he's you know doing this strategy all like every game because the Zerg is most likely just playing his own standard game and then reacting to the opponent and maybe mixes in a Niters or two uh, in those however many games that is the main difference and Zerg's have always done better in these weekly tournaments. Yes, we did have Protosses and Terrans win them, but as far as kind of strategy ta tactics advantage goes, it definitely goes to the Zergs in these weekly tournaments. Now, on the other side, we have completely different thing. So this is GSL um, in season one in 2019, and the situation is completely reversed. So we have seen Sue win I and Katowice, but in here, Sue dropped out in group stage in a round of 16. Why? Did he play bad? Did he choke? Was he nervous? No. Other players have just prepared better. And this is the difference between weekly tournaments and GSL type tournaments. These kinds of tournaments allow you to prepare much better, not for the matchup, but for the player you're playing against. So a very good example in this is group one, group A, where we have Maru actually losing out to Bunny. Now, if you ask people, is Bunny better than Maru? 99.9% .9 are gonna say, of course not. Maru is way better. Uh, but in this specific case, Bunny won. Why? Because he prepared better. Uh, you can always use the excuse of, ah, oh, he wasn't playing well, he wasn't doing this, but there's a lot of mini kind of small things that are happening throughout the match that the viewers Sometimes the casters or even players in the games that they're playing, they don't really pick it up, but there's a lot of mind games going on. The players are switching small things in order to confuse and, and mess around with their opponent. And Bunny beat Mara. Is Bunny the best Terran in the world? Probably not, but he did get first in the group. On the other hand, you have Bunny who did very, very poorly at IM Katowice. So, uh, I'll use uh, the second group that we have completed as well is group D, TY going first in the group with Rogue, Sue, and Gumiho. He beat Gumiho 2-0, then he beat Rogue very easily 2-0. Now, why did TY lose against Solar 3-0? Well, TY has probably revealed some strategies that I'm Katowice. Maybe he just wasn't playing well that tournament, but here we see that he defeated Rogue. 2-0, uh, went through his group quite easily, and the next thing we also see is Sue not advancing like I mentioned earlier. Why? Well, he actually lost to Rogue twice, 2-0 each. Um, this could have been, you know, 
because of many things. Uh, number one, Rogue prepared better. Number two, Rogue tried to blind counter what Sue usually does. Uh, he just had more time to prepare what Sue can possibly do and he tried to play around it because in these kinds of GSL bra uh, group kind of tournaments that you have time to prepare, sometimes even two, three weeks, again, you will prepare for the player, not specifically for the race. And that will give you sometimes quite a different result uh, from tournament to tournament. Now, so we saw I am Katowice where Terran was doing really bad, where Terran did really bad, but right now we see three Terrans out of four players in top eight. And I'm pretty sure that Innovation also has a very, very good chance of advancing in Group C. And the reason for that is he's playing against three Protosses. He knows these guys. He's the only Terran in the group. He only needs to prepare one matchup in which if he was playing at IM Kotovitz against maybe one or two Protosses and a couple of Zergs and a couple of Terrans, he might have lost to the Protosses there. But right now he has better chances to advance this group than the other three Protoss, simply because he's just focusing on one matchup. And I feel like these are the things that a lot of people overlook when they look into the brackets and tournaments. Um, this is something that even before... I mean, how many GSLs have we had where Zerg would just do terrible in GSL? We would have like one Zerg in top eight and people would be crying that it's because imbalance. Uh, Zerg has the hardest time in these kinds of tournaments because they can't prepare something super, super unique because they're usually the defenders and they're usually the race that reacts to to builds and to cheeses. And as a Protoss or a Terran player, you can create a new strategy or adjust the strategy that already exists to kind of counter the player you're playing against, if that makes sense. Now, another reason why Terrence might have done bad in this tournament is simply it just happened that he didn't play well. Um, it does happen. Uh, sometimes one player from one race plays terrible and drops out. Sometimes it just lines up that almost all of them do. And another thing that I think a lot of people are kind of skimping through is all of these Terrans actually missed advancing by one map. Um, special, he missed advancing by one map. If he beat, uh, I think it was against Hero. Oh no, it was against Stats. He lost 2-1. If he won 2-1, he advances that group. Uh, you have Maru with 2-3, 6-6 score. He also had 2-1 results. If he won one of those maps, he advances. Uh, did we expect Maru to be first or second? Sure. But all of these players, and this is something that uh, kind of maybe a lot of players don't always take into in consideration, is all these guys are super, super high level. And I feel like all of these guys, or most of these guys on, on a good day can win the whole tournament. Sometimes you just don't play your 100%. Sometimes you play 90 and another player does 100 and he beats you. Uh, we see Gumiho as well, 6'6", six, six, compared to Solar 7'7". Seven, seven. Uh, Innovation did pretty bad, but I'll discuss that in a second. TY advanced and then Bunny again 6-7, Euthermal 5-7. So it's a map or two away from advancing. It's not like these guys went, you know, 0-5 in their group and they had no chance of winning at all. Now, Innovation is something that people have said, oh, he played so bad. Uh, what's happening to Innovation? Is he, is he done? You know, what's going on? He went 0-4 against Rogue, Gumio, Solar, and Ragnarok, and then he beat Serral in the last match. So then people brought up, well, Serral probably didn't care. I can tell you right now, no matter if you're European, if you're from NA server, if you're a Korean, you don't go into a tournament, win the group, and then say, well, I don't care. I'll just play, you know, hour and a half against Innovation. I didn't want to win, but I'll play an hour and a half. Of course everyone wants to win. They, they don't want to lose. But the group, this group specifically, was so stacked that someone like Innovation can go 0-4 and then beat the player that won the group in the end. That's how stacked this group was. And from this group, I honestly think anyone could have advanced. We just saw Rogue and GSL beat Sue 4 0 He went out of this group. It happens. Now... Um, that's my opinion. Uh, I think <clears throat> big part of, of all of this, again, it's not necessarily game balance, it's game design, and I'm not going to go too in-depth uh, on this, but Terran is a race that struggles a little bit from um, game design, 
by being forced to harass both Protestants and Zerg, and it kind of makes you very vulnerable in best of three or five series because people know that you will be doing some kind of harassment so they all they need to do is kind of like defend and then counter push and that's what we see pretty much uh pretty much every game you don't see a lot of games where Terran goes triple cc and just doesn't move out and goes into the late game and you know some people wonder like oh why you know why don't they just try they've tried many many times it doesn't work you need to harass in order to win is Terran 90 percent or more of your of your games I do want to end this thing by saying that do I think StarCraft 2 is balanced? No, it, it's not. A three race strategy game cannot be balanced. Doesn't matter how well and how many people work on it. It's it's just not possible to make it balanced because the three races work completely different. They have completely different units. If you buff one unit, it might mess another mess up another matchup. <clears throat> so it is not balanced. Um, do I think uh, this is a discussion a lot of people have had? Do I, you know, Protoss versus Terran is imbalanced? Do I think that Protoss has an advantage against Terran? Yes. Is it unwinnable? No. Is this why the Terrans didn't do well in I am Katowice? Absolutely not. It's, in my opinion, because of the reasons I listed earlier. And for all the people that are comparing themselves to these guys and say, if they can't win, how am I going to win? Just like they're playing against you know top pro gamers you're not you're playing against people that are your league and i think my personal opinion is if you're gold if you're diamond if you're masters if you're low gm if you're mid gm you should probably not compa complain about balance not because the game isn't in balance but because that's not why you're in that position uh we see top players from every race uh you know competing at the highest level so that's not the reason why you're losing and the quicker you realize that the quicker you will do better uh but that's it that's it for this video uh i would love to hear your guys thoughts on this uh what do you think why do you think they lost do you agree with me do you disagree with me are you going to scream you know just imbalance and that's it do you think they had a bad day let me know in the comments below but for now i want to thank you guys for watching have a great day and i'll see you guys tomorrow with another video bye bye if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and make sure to check out one of my previous videos. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching, have a very nice day, and I'll see you guys next time.